I'm very lucky because I get to drive a lot of new cars, including this new Cupra Terramar that I'm in today. And this is a plug-in hybrid and I need an electric charger at home. I don't have an EV yet, but it would be nice to have one installed. But I live currently in a 1950s build house with really, really old electronics. It doesn't even have like a proper fuse board. Um, and of course it needs a full rewire, but that's an expense I can't chill out for just yet. So I wanted to find out how easy is it to actually install an electric car charger if you've got these really old electronics in your house or a really old house to work with. But the guys that are coming out to see me today are professionals in this field and they know exactly how to make this work and it basically involves installing some extra parts to make it safe and easy so ben you're the man in the know morning dan i am apparently <laughs> <laughs> so just tell us a bit about yourself and, and what you guys do so we're um electrics company so we've set up a couple of years ago we specialize in ev chargers we've now moved to solar as well and general electrics but generally speaking, uh, our main focus are EV chargers. Nice, yeah. And you operate mainly in the southeast. Southeast, Kent, Bexley, Greenwich, Sidcup, those sorts of areas, and anything within an hour's range. Yeah, perfect. So, I mean, the main thing I had um, concern when doing this was the, the electronics in this house. It's a 1950s build, and I mean, I don't know. You'll you'll be able to tell me what the electrics look like, but it's definitely not been updated in a while. So, what's the what's the kind of the catch, and is there much of a price implication when you're dealing with that? Like, what can you do to get around that? Usually, we need to come out and do a site visit first. The fact that the electrics are so old doesn't really affect us because what we like to do, we like to put a board in which is separate to the house electrics and normally that's for two reasons one we can add in surge protection which is basically what it says on the tin so it'll protect the car in case of a surge now the new electric cars they've got a lot of electronics in it so it's quite important to have that and two if there ever is an issue with a charger you don't want it affecting the actual house electrics yeah of course yeah so what we do always try and do is put a separate board in from the house. So what I can do, I can show you when we have a look inside how it looks and what we're going to do and the board we're going to set up, which will separate everything. So the fact that the electrics are quite old in the house, we can kind of get around that. We can get around that and you can get an EV charger in without having to touch anything existing yeah perfect all right well, let's take a look inside then and you can show me what you yeah. mean um because yeah like i said we're kind of dealing with something a bit older in here this the main board in here i think is still asbestos breakers and stuff like that so yeah <laughs> kind of goes to right. show right so at the minute as you can see so this would be your main incoming supply uh from there we're going to your meter and this is your consumer unit your fuse box at the moment um, and like you quite like rightly said, that's quite old and that would need, the whole thing would need to be upgraded before, even if we were going to put an EV charger in there. So what we're going to do, because we know this is going to get renovated later and this is all going to get upgraded at some point, what we're going to do for the time being, we're going to split the towers, which are these. So essentially what it is, it's a uh, connection block, if you imagine. And we're going to split these, go into that connection block. From there, we're going to have a live and neutral going to this board. And then we're going to put in another board, which is similar size to this, and have another live and neutral going to there. And that will s supply only the EV charger and not the house electrics. And then from there, obviously, we take a cable which goes back out to the EV charger. So it's, it's as simple as that. So we're going to be using this cable, it's called EV Ultra and it's made by Doncaster Cables. But what it allows you to do is run power, so you've got the live neutral and earth. And also you can see two little cores in there. And that will be for the current transformer which we'll come back to in a bit to explain what that does. But this is also available in a Cat5 or a Cat6 at the same time, so you can run data uh, along with the power, which originally you couldn't do. So the only other thing is as well, we've got concrete floors in here, so you can't drill underneath them. So typically you would, I guess, put it under the floor, right, the cable? Yeah, typically we lift up the floorboards there, we'll make a hole somewhere at the front here and shove a rod in or shove a, a cable in and pull the cable out. But because we can't do that here, 
what we're going to have to do. I know you're redecorating as well, so obviously it's been agreed. We're going to drill a little hole in this corner, come along the top and clip it along this skirt in here, along the top there. Uh, go through this corner down here uh, and then come through again, drill from the outside in by this mortar line, come out around the bottom here, bring it all the way across and then we're going to end up around here somewhere. But typically if this was a typical house where we could get under the floor, all we would be doing, we'd be drilling under here somewhere and and then basically shoving a rod through and that go straight under the stairs and bring up the cable there and it'll be nice and hidden. stairs now yep so walk us through what, what we had to do so what we've had to do is so initially the power from here which is your meter was going to this board what we've done now we've redirected it to these Henley blocks and from these Henley blocks like the live and neutral we've used the existing meter towels and gone back into that however up here we've added new meter towels and we've gone into this new uh, fuse box. So this is dedicated for the EV only. So the orange thing you see is the SPD. So that's to protect against any surges coming into the property. Um, this is basically the main switch. This powers this. So this needs its own power, which comes from this. And this is an RCBO, which is there to protect your charger and the EV cable. The other thing we've added, you'll see is this little cable here that comes all the way down and that goes to the main, one of the uh, lives before splitting off. Now, what this does is it's a simple but clever device. It will read what the house is using. So for example, this house has got a 60 amp fuse, as you can see there. The charger takes 32 amps when it's charging. So what that means is it will need to use 32 out of the 60 when it's charging. So the, that clamp will tell the charger what the house is using. So if the house is using 40, it will only allow the charger to charge at 20 amps. Once it realizes, oh, we've got a spare 32 amps we can use, it will then allow the charger to charge at the full rate. Um, and what it's there to do is basically protect this main fuse, because if that blows, then there's, uh, it can be a big problem. And, and that's as simple as it is. So we've done a nice setup, and then we can show you the cable run now. Since the floor is all concrete, what we've had to do is go on the surface, but we've come out right in the corner there, mount it above the skirting, um, come round here, there we went in at an angle to stop breaking uh, any breaking of that glass there. And then out here, we've hid the cable as well as we can. We've gone under, it's pretty well hidden under there. 
and then all the way across and basically up to the charger and that is the charger um, and this you can leave it you can put the cover on and just leave it be leave it hanging like that if you prefer or if the other option is how it was just click it in there and it can sit like that as well smashing well thank you so much mate i really do appreciate no the time problem. today um yeah i'm going to leave all your links in the description so if anyone is in the southeast looking for an install then these guys are the guys to get in touch with um, so yeah mate honestly i thank really you. appreciate it so much um yeah we'll Pleasure see you being soon. Here. So there we go guys, thank you so much to Ben and Tom who put in an absolute shift at mine today. You can see I'm a bit of a sweaty mess, it's been very, very hot here today, um, but they've done a fantastic install. It's super neat, super tidy, and it's got the uprated safety of the extra fuse in there. So um, yeah, it goes to show you can get this done even if your electronics in your house are really old, which is what I was really curious about, um, and this charger is gonna serve me well. So if you are after an EV charger install in the Southeast region, please do hit them up. I'll leave their links in the description below. They're on checker trays and all that good stuff. And they've done an absolutely fantastic job and Ben's attention to detail is fantastic in terms of making sure all the cable runs um, you know are really neat and tidy it all looks as neat as it can and Tom putting the muscle in today to get that done uh, it's been a fantastic day and we've got it all sorted so I can now charge my cars at home which makes life a lot easier for me and it just goes to show that actually you can overcome some of these complications that might be putting you off getting one done yourself so please visit them at the links below. Please give us a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.